All right, everyone. Welcome to Chart Attack. This is Vishal from Equity Guru. Um, a lot of drama happening in the oil markets. Uh, if you guys have watched our previous videos or read my work over on Equity Guru, you know, you guys have known that I've been bullish on oil, especially since we broke uh, above this flag pattern here and we took out these highs here at $74. Uh, and we will take a look at this area again because, as you guys can see, it is going to be a big, important resistance zone. Um, I'll just get rid of these flags here because they're not really uh, relevant right now. Um, oil hit highs here for around $85 a barrel. Uh, we tried twice to try to make new recent highs, but we got rejected uh, multiple times here. Big fat red candle there on the 10th of November. Um, if you guys are members of our Discord channel, I did mention, hey, folks, I can draw a support here at 79.40. And we're, we are sort of looking at a bit of a topping pattern here. Um, be careful. I actually took a short when we broke down here on the 17th. Uh, so I took a short here on oil, held it, uh, saw this retest. And then I took my profits once we hit the $76 zone because we are pretty close to this uh, support zone. And this is what I want to sort of mention here on oil. It's uh, it's maybe not the best setup, uh, and I'll show you why when we take a look on the weekly chart. Um, but you can see here today we came back now to retest this oil price zone, and um, we created a, a little spinning top candle here, <clears throat> indicating a battle between the bulls and the bears. Uh, if we're going to flip bullish just on a technical basis here on oil, we want to see a close, a daily close back over this uh you know resistance zone and unfortunately we could not do that so keep an eye out on that but you know of course the big news was um uh, president biden basically coming out saying hey look oil prices are too expensive for the middle class here uh, we got to do something about it back in summer i told opec to uh you know uh increase their production to uh put more uh supply out so they can drop prices but OPEC said, no, nah, it's okay, man. We need we need higher oil prices, right? Uh, Saudi royal family needs cash, and a whole bunch of other countries uh, want cash, the Russian government, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, obviously, Russia is not technically a part of OPEC, but they call it OPEC plus uh, because it's OPEC plus uh, Russia. And uh, I've, I've mentioned here in this article, uh, has President Biden initiated an oil price war? And, you know, you have to talk about macro um, economics and geopolitics when we look at oil obviously a lot of people know about the US petrodollar um, this whole idea that basically the Saudis will accept US dollars for oil uh, as long as the Americans protect Saudi Arabia you know turn a blind eye on the human rights stuff there um, but they'll protect the royal family with the US military uh, the Saudis just have to accept US dollars and then take some of those dollar profits and reinvest it in the United States. And it's a system that basically has been working uh, for quite some time. And a lot of people say that maybe it's Saudi Arabia that can pull the strings because if they don't like something, for example, if they don't like a resurging Iran in the Middle East, they might ask the Americans kindly to do something about it. Otherwise, they might turn to this man. And I have a meme here because this meme is very popular, but it's uh, Mohammed bin Salman and, you know, Vladimir Putin, and you have President Trump there uh, staring these guys down. It's been one of those memes there, and a lot of people have been talking about, you know, Mohammed bin Salman. I'm just going to call him MBS because that's what everyone does, and Putin, and how maybe Russia is getting a bit cozy uh, with Saudi Arabia, and eventually down the road, uh, the Saudis might say, hey, maybe the Russians can protect us. We don't really need the American military, and maybe the Russians might say, hey, why don't you guys stop accepting U.S. dollars and uh, we can do something about it? You know, our best interest is to see oil prices rise. Your guys' best interest is to see oil prices rise. So let's work together. Uh, so keep an eye out on that. I think it's uh, something that you sort of have to factor in. And you're sort of seeing the beginnings of that now because what, um, what President Biden did was he wants to start releasing 50 million barrels which is technically the equivalent of about two and a half days of U.S. demand. Um, and OPEC is considering to cut production. Uh, so if the U.S. You know, releases more barrels to put, increase supply of oil to bring the prices down, OPEC plus will cut production uh, to lower, you know, to, to increase the prices of oil. So you have this battle between 
Team Biden versus, I guess, uh, um, OPEC Plus. Uh, I just say Team Biden, but Biden has been saying that, hey, you know, uh, Japan, South Korea, heck, China, India, and the UK, they're with us. They're releasing reserves to lower oil prices. India is saying it would release 5 million. Britain says it will voluntarily release 1.5 million barrels. Uh, Japan saying a few hundred thousand kiloliters, um, but nothing has been decided on. And then South Korea said they would dis- decide after discussions with the U.S. and other allies, but no details as of yet. And then the Chinese, who are obviously the largest crude importer, uh, they remain non-committal, uh, but they have said, "Hey, look, if we are going to do something about lowering oil prices, it's because we want to do it for our economy and for our needs." Uh, you know, sort of, I guess, taking. Um, Sort of trying to say, you know, we're not really working with the U.S., right? We're, we're doing things on our terms and uh, because we want to do it to help our domestic market. So keep an eye out on that if it even goes anywhere. And as you guys can sort of see, generally OPEC wants, uh, a, you know, $70 a barrel or higher. Uh, countries such as, you know, Russia and Iran, I don't think they have any interest of doing any favors for uh, President Biden or the U.S., uh, so a lot of eyes are, of course, in the, on this relationship with Saudi Arabia, who are sort of the, the big boys there at OPEC+. Plus. And uh, as I said, it looks like Russia and Saudi Arabia are sort of getting close together, and Russia is getting much more involved now with OPEC um, and, uh, you know, what they can do with the oil market. So keep an eye out on that geopolitically. I, I do love that kind of stuff. But back to the charts. Uh, on that day where President Biden said that we're going to lower oil prices, or we're going to attempt to lower oil prices, uh, oil actually popped uh, above 2%, so doing the opposite on the announcement. But of course, you know, it's a gradual release process. So we're going to see uh, what happens. Technically, like I said, because we are under this support zone here, we can still make another move lower. But as I said, it just maybe not the best for a risk reward here, because if I go out here on the weekly chart, you guys can sort of see why this level is so important. Um, you know, it was previous resistance uh, going back to 2018. We broke above these highs here. We actually did hit it on July 21st, but we sold off. Sorry, July of 2021, and then we sold off, uh, and then we broke back above. And as you guys know, whenever there's breakouts, uh, we tend to see a pullback to retest before we take off higher. So on a weekly time frame, things are actually still looking uh, bullish there for oil. You still have your uh, uptrend here. So we got to see, you know, what Biden can do here. Um, but if we do pull back, you know, it would probably be around the $74, 75 uh, a barrel level. Uh, but just technically, folks, on the, on the longer term, it, it's not looking like Team Biden's going to win this one. Uh, perhaps OPEC and OPEC Plus does something. And I think that uh, opens up a, a, an amazing sort of case here on geopolitics and where the world is heading to into the future with basically Saudi Arabia maybe joining that eastern sphere, and of course, uh, Russia uh, getting a bit more involved uh, with OPEC. And then, uh, you know, I'm not saying this is for sure, but there was rumors back in the day that when Aramco in Saudi Arabia was going public, uh, China wanted to buy a large part of Aramco, uh, but they didn't like the idea that the Saudis were still accepting U.S. dollars, and they sort of wanted this sort of uh, deal where, hey, if you if we buy a bunch of Aramco, uh, you guys go to sort of ditch that dollar and maybe price contracts in Chinese yuan or something. Uh, again, just a rumor. I'm not saying that's something that's uh, confirmed, but that's the kind of stuff you have to focus on when we're looking at the oil markets and geopolitics. So that's going to be it for me, folks. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to follow us on all our social media links and profiles that are provided in the description box below. If you guys like macroeconomics and charts and markets, be sure to join our free Discord channel uh, where I talk about charts and markets and stuff every day. And we have a few hundred members uh, there. Uh, But more importantly, let me know what you guys think of oil here. Uh, What do you guys think of this weekly chart? Do you think Biden can bring the prices down here with his alliance with Japan and South Korea and China and the UK and India? Or do you think uh, Team OPEC, Team OPEC Plus, uh, you know, sort of steps in and says, hey, not so fast, folks, we're going higher. Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you guys all in the next video.